Right. Members, we're just going to have to wait to bring everybody back and no waiting room. Okay, um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to all of those who we put in the waiting room briefly for your patience. So, um, where were we? Members, we were still at the questions for officers, and if there are no further questions for officers, then I have a proposal from the officer team in front of me here uh, for LA 11 2021 uh, 4 slash 0. Yeah, I had uh, for, uh, to make a proposal before Councillor Kelly fired in that uh, question. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Councillor McGuire. Um, Councillor McGuire, I, I hope you appreciate that the, the IT, it, I don't know the jury on my end, but it's, it's quite difficult hearing you, but if you do have a proposal, then I'm content to take that proposal now. Well, Chair, well, the way I see it is um, CTY 2A is, uh, is what this is hanging on. And uh, with uh, PPS 21 and with the Strabane area plan, and again, uh, the rural remainder 123.2.1, where it does say a less restrictive plan and policy will be applied throughout this area. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it meets nearly all uh, the bullet points of CTY 2A, uh, with the exception of the focal point, uh, such as a community building facility or is located at a crossroads. Uh, it does meet point A, cluster development lies outside a fire, consists of four more buildings, including ancillary buildings such as garages, outbuildings, and open sized structures, at least which three are dwellings, and, and one, I don't need to read them all here. But uh, to my mind, uh, if we meet uh, policy CTY2A, then uh, CTY1, uh, 8, and 14 all fall because. Uh, you know, it is bounded on both sides. Uh, it, it does nestle uh, in, in behind 41 and then between the 43 and uh, has the backdrop of uh, the Mulder Brain Hall. So with that in mind, Chair, I propose we do not accept the officer's recommendation uh, on uh, those reasons I've given. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor McGuire. Um, so there's a proposal from Councillor McGuire based on uh, what he just said there. Uh, I'm going to require a seconder on that. Uh, Alderman Kerrigan uh, is seconding Councillor McGuire's proposal. Uh, so members, you all heard that. Um, and um, with the formal proposal from Councillor McGuire and seconded from uh, Alderman Kerrigan, uh, I'm now going to ask the uh, head of planning to uh, put this to the vote. Thank you, Chair. Members, this is item eight, and the, this is proposal not to accept the officer's recommendation. Alderman Alan Braslin? For. Alderman Keith Kerrigan? For, Mara. Thank you. Alderman Drew Thompson? For, Mara. Thank you. Apologies for Councillor. Barr, Jason Barr, Councillor Raymond Barr, Councillor John Boyle, yes, Councillor Angela Dobbins, for Mara, Councillor Paul Gallagher, for Mara, okay, Councillor Christopher Jackson, for, okay, Councillor Dan Kelly, for Mara, thank you. Patricia Logue, as apologies. Councillor Kieran Maguire. Or as well. Thank you. Councillor Fulton McKinney, as apologies. And Councillor Sean Money. Against. Thank okay. you. That's nine for two against. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, members. Um, uh, thank you again to. Uh, 
Mr. Johns um, uh, and all of you who had uh, patiently awaited uh, our uh, deliberations uh, in confidential business. However, um, I regret to say um, for all of you who've been waiting, you're going to have to wait for another 10 minutes um, because it's now incumbent upon me to uh, uh, afford uh, officers and elected members uh, a 10 minute uh, comfort break. So again, we will be back uh, to business in and around 4.30. Thank you. Um,
Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, again, uh, that was item number 11. We have three further items to um, adjudicate on this afternoon, and the next item for our consideration is item number four uh, in your pack, and that is LA 11 2020 0253 forward slash F. It's a recommendation for approval, and Rosie is going to present to us now. There are no speakers other than our, our own officer. Go ahead, Rosie. Thank you, Chair. Um, item L4 is LA 11 2020-0253-F, and it's a proposal for um, a bridge link um, from the existing Key Trail to the new Northwest Greenway running along Bay Road, which will tie into the existing path network at Bay Road. So a new three metre wide pedestrian and cyclist greenway path will be constructed alongside Bay Road and the banks of the River Foyle as far as the Bay Road Park. Um, the location is the key trail along the Bay Road and the recommendation is to approve. So the application is before committee today as council is the applicant. This slide just shows the location um, for the bridge. If you can just see my arrow here, this is the bridge will be going over this part of the Penny Burn and then proceeding along these lands at Bay Road. Um, the this where the where the path connects here into Bay, Bay Road Park um, will connect into the greenway path that was uh, previously um, approved by the planning committee. This application was actually an EIA application. Um, there was the potential for significant environmental risk arising due to the potential for contaminated land along these uh, lands in the industrial park. Um, and because of the uh, proximity to the River Foyle, um, officers determined that an EIA was required. So detailed consideration of the EIA is set out in the planning report. In terms of consultees, you'll see there were no objections to the consultees, um, or sorry, no objections from the consultees. Now, to date, no um, response has been received from the LOCKS agency, and I'll discuss that later in the presentation. Um, no representations were received in respect of the application either. So the site itself along the Bay Road is located in zoned open space, and given the definition in Annex A of PPS 8, which defines amenity footpaths and cycleways as open space, officers are, officers are satisfied that the proposed development doesn't result in the loss of open space and complies with PPS 8 policy OS 1. Um, so this is just a slide showing the, the bridge that's proposed over the Penny Burn. It'll probably have the most... Um, notable visual impact of the new route and the bridge is it's a 62 meter long bridge and it'll be 10 and a half meters high at its highest point so in the eia there was an assessment of the visual impact um, of the the bridge and the routeway and officers would agree with the assessment provided in the eia that the bridge will introduce a positive architectural feature into the cityscape It'll serve to reinvigorate this part of the city, providing a landmark feature, and there'll be an important link opening up the River Foyle um, for access, as well as being a standalone architectural asset. So it just shows you where the this is a before and after um, photo montage provided in the EIA, showing the location for the bridge and the appearance of the area once the bridge is installed. It's also proposed to provide um, significant planting along just where the arrow is there, um, which will assist in providing screening of the existing industrial buildings. It's not considered that the pathway itself is going to have any visual impact. It's running along um, lands that are fairly flat and gradient at the minute. Um, there's the requir requirement to remove some trees to provide the path, but new um, additional and new native planting plant will uh, be provided. There's also more um, lighting proposed along the bridge and the path. It'll just give you an idea of the proposed appearance of um, the lighting. Um, it's not considered, given that this is in a city location, that that new lighting will have any significant um, impact on the street or the you know the, the cityscape, the street scene, or um, actual environmental impact, given the proximity along the river. So, as I stated, there was. Um, 
land contamination or the potential for land contamination given land uses that are in the vicinity of the site. And these included a coal storage yard, timber product and manufacturing works, chemical works, engineering works and an oil depot. Um, the ground contamination report submitted with the application initially identified the potential for a moderate to high risk of pollution and concluded that the application site posed a potential unacceptable risk to the water environment and to human health of site workers during construction. So on this basis, we felt that um, an EIA was required. And in respect of that, NIEA, SES um, and EHD have um, considered the, the um, conclusions reached in the EIA, and they're satisfied that the results of the detailed ground investigations identify no unacceptable risks or significant impacts to protected sites, um, which is the river, um, or to site workers. Now, LOX agency haven't responded um, at this point, but officers are um, content to move the application before committee today, given the responses we've received from NIEA, which has included Water Management Unit, the Land and Groundwater Team, Natural Environment Division and SES, um, which they've concluded that subject to conditions which do include monitoring conditions, that adequate measures will be put in place to protect the river foil from pollution incidents during construction. Health and Safety Executive um, were consulted um, during the processing of this application um, as if the, um, the former um, site here at Bay 7 Bay Road. This was a former oil depot and a Health and Safety Executive have advised that it's no longer a coma site, which is the control of major accident hazards. Um, and they offered no objection to the current application. But officers would just like to make members aware that we received an application for um, hazardous substance consent for one of the, the tanks within this uh, the Seven Bay Road site, um, and it's currently under consideration. Um, we've consulted DFI Rivers as the site is in proximity to the River Foyle and the, the bridge over the Penny Burn, and they have advised that part of the site, um, including where the bridge will go, and at this point here along the where the former coal yard was located are um, within the uh, river. They're, they're within the fluvial floodplain and the coastal floodplain. Um, but the path or the path as it leads down Bay Road is not inside the floodplain. The flood risk assessment was submitted with the application. Um, and it's centred on um, a flood evacuation plan, which ensures that the path isn't used during extreme weather. So the council itself will adopt and maintain the path, including the bridge and its associated structures. And officers consider that the route will be under the control of the council, that the emergency evacuation proposals are reasonable, and that the proposal then complies with um, FLD 1 of PPS 15. In respect of surface water flooding, there's a small part of the site that is indicated to, to be affected by surface water flooding. Um, the route within Bay Road is not shown to be at risk from surface water flooding. And again, mitigation is by way of evacuation should there be any um, um, extreme weather. Um, in respect of the path as it goes on down Bay Road, its rivers agency had suggested that the path should run flush with the ground. But if we look at the cross sections there, just where the path is located, there's a slight slope off to that. So any surface water runoff will be to the grassed area between the river and the path. So surface water runoff isn't considered to be um, an issue. So just in summary on that point, the, both the and from a flood risk perspective from the river or the coast or surface water flooding, DFI Rivers has no objection. DFI Rivers advise that um, the site is within the reservoir Part of the site is within the reservoir inundation maps, which indicate that there's a potential um, inundation emanating from the Craigan upper and the Craigan lower reservoirs. It's set out in detail in the planning report and on balance, officers have considered that the risk of an uncontrolled release of water or a catastrophic failure of the reservoir is low. And whilst the proposed pedestrian bridge and path will link to two existing paths at the Greenway Trail, Current pedestrian and cyclist access is already available in the location. So it's not considered that the construction of the bridge and path will increase pedestrian or cyclist numbers significantly from those that can already access the surrounding path and road network. And when balanced with the fact that the risk of an uncontrolled release of water is low, officers are content 
um, that the proposal is satisfies policy FLD5. In respect of ecology and biodiversity, um, as the we've been the, the application site is hydrologically connected to the River Foyle, which is an SAC and ASSI designated river. Um, NED, SES, and the Marine and Fisheries Division of NIA consider that subject to conditions regarding detailed mitigation measures to be implemented on site during construction, the proposal won't have an adverse effect on the integrity of the River Foyle. In respect of species protected by law and priority habitats and species, again, NED is satisfied subject to condition that there's sufficient mitigation to ensure that um, it's unlikely that the development is unlikely to result in significant adverse impact. In respect of noise and vibration, the main source of noise associated with the development relates to the construction of the bridge, including piling. Um, the construction phase is expected to last for approximately six months, and the piling works are expected to be carried out over two to three days. So subject to condition, including the use of only pre a driven driven precast piling and a restriction on the time that the works can be undertaken for piling, officers are satisfied that the impact of the development due to noise is not likely to be significant. In respect of transport, um, officers consider that the proposal takes account of the riverside strategy within the dairy area plan, as the Greenway route provides a pedestrian and cycle route linkage along the riverside in accordance with the area plan policy TR3 and PPS3 policy AMP8 regarding cycling. The Greenway um, linkage will help increase cycle activity and provide safe uh, facilities for cyclists. In respect of policy AMP1 of the PPS3, it helps create an accessible um, environment by providing a dedicated cycling route along Bay Road. And in respect of road safety, the new path um, will be separated from Bay Road itself by a 2.5 metre wide planted buffer, which um, will you know, add to the safety of the use of that path for cycling and uh, pedestrians. Um, we did consult DFI roads and they have no objection and no um, didn't offer any conditions in respect of the application. So to conclude, in accordance with the EIA regulations, officers have examined the environmental information submitted and consider that it is evident from an assessment of the consultee responses provided that there's no objection to the development proceeding. Officers reasonably conclu conclude that subject to mitigation to be secured by condition and where necessary monitored, that the development will not have a likely significant detrimental impact on the environment. And officers are satisfied that in policy terms, the proposal is acceptable under the dairy area plan, the SPPS, PPS2, PPS3, PPS 6, PPS 8, 13 and 15 and in respect of the development are on balance, these policies are met and approval is recommended subject to the conditions set out in the planning report. Thank you. Thank you, Okay. Many members, um, there's no speakers, no presentations, um, so uh, automatically uh, over to yourselves for any questions you might have for Rosie. I don't, uh, uh, Councillor Dobbins, do you have a question? Um, I do have a question uh, for Rosie. Rosie, you said that, um, I just want to re uh, just confirm in my head here, Locks Agency, Locks Agency have not, not replied um, with, with any, or have not made any comment with regard to this. What what specifically is your question, Councillor Dobbins? I'm oh, sorry, I thought I asked it. Um, Rosie has Locks Agency not replied to. Uh, right, uh, sorry, Councillor yeah. Dobbins, you're not coming through terribly loud and clear. Okay, got that the second time around. Go ahead, Rosie. Through the chair, yes, um, Councillor Dobbins, that's correct. Um, Locks Agency have not yet provided a response. Okay, Councillor Dobbins. Um, with regard to that, um, then chair, uh, I'm just looking, or maybe Maura could, would be best. Can we go ahead? And I know that the planning officer has has said that they're happy enough, you know, to go ahead. But can we literally go ahead without that response? Like to me, uh, Rivers Agency and the Lock Agency have a big say with regard to 
the River Foyle. And considering what this is, like I'm actually happy to propose it if nobody else has any questions. Um, but um, should we actually be doing this, um, considering that they haven't given any response? Uh, Andre. Sorry, through the chair. Um, yes, that's correct. Locks Agency were consulted in the application and have not returned a response. Um, we have um, given weight um, and consideration to the responses received from statutory consultees, which would have a similar remit to um, the response that Locks Agency would have been um, given back to us. We did follow it up with, with emails and reminders to Locks Agency, but to date we haven't received anything. Um, the only thing I could suggest maybe that we give members comfort is that we could follow it up further after today's meeting and if anything arises from a response that we, we get, um, we can bring that back to members' attention. Um, but we don't feel that given the other responses and the detailed consideration given by ourselves and other consultees that there will be a major issue raised that would conflict with the recommendation here today. Thank you, Henri. Okay, uh, Councillor Jackson. Um, thank you, Chair. And firstly, I would just like to say that I was delighted to see this application on the schedule for today. Um, it, it has been much anticipated. Um, it was, I know it, it, it was detailed within um, the wider Greenway piece um, and as part of our green infrastructure plan. And I know that the, the location of, of this particular application um, has raised its own issues and, and from uh, and from a planning perspective um, may have been uh, may, may have been a bit more complicated than we would have liked but um, it's a fantastic addition to our our greenways um, and it it, it actually complements the wider Northwest Greenway um, as a whole. So I'm delighted to see this application come forward. Um, I, I'm prepared and delighted to, to propose the application if, if appropriate. Um, and taking on the points from Councillor Dobbins around the, the, the non-response um, from the LOCKS agency, um, I am encouraged by the approach taken by our planning department. Um, I think when we, we've had we've had many different discussions around um, how we as a council approach planning, and one of one of the frustrations that that I have as an elected member is that the length of time the statutory consultees take. They respond to applications, or they respond to our consultations, and I would like to see our council take a firmer approach to the statutory consultations. Um, our, we we have a, a duty to um, to deliver for our city and district, um, and we shouldn't always be sitting waiting um, for the statutory consultees. Um, or, or, or people to respond to consultations, um, that a firm approach could make our planning system a lot more quicker and efficient. And that I know there, I know there is there's, there's various workshops around um, uh, how we operate as a, as a planning system, and and that's one of the things that I personally would be keen to explore. Um, so I would have a completely different approach or view than, than Councillor Dobbins in relation to um, a non-response from, from the likes of the LOCKS agency. I think the approach from, from our planners in, in this, on, on respect to this application is very refreshing and I hope that it's, it's, it's a trend that will be continued. Um, but that being said, this application that's in front of us, um, it's it's a fantastic application. Um, it's, as I said before, 
it's been long awaited and that it will it will prove to be a fantastic addition to our greenway which as which we have seen over recent months is well loved and well used by members of the public so i look forward to the work commencing thank you chair um thank you uh councillor jackson and in the chat box um councillor dobbins has seconded your proposal and clearly uh, officers have also noted councillor dobbins um your desire to have a follow-up with the locks agency so um thank you for that andre if you could chase that up um members if there's no further comment um I'll ask Maura again to, oh, hang on, Maura, I might have been a wee bit ahead of myself there, sorry, Councillor Mooney, go ahead. Chair, I'd just like to echo the comments already um, expressed there, uh, most notably by Councillor Jackson. Uh, this is a welcome application and it will be a welcome addition to our, our green, Greenway infrastructure. Um, we know that part of town so well, and it'll cut off having to travel up around the Bay Park and a lovely new addition to the bridge as well. Uh, it'll bring together the Bay Park together along with the, the existing um, Greenway uh, that lies down on the bank of Sainsbury's. And uh, I, for one, am glad to see it. It'll open up that part of the area and it'll be much more attractive for our local residents who are either walking or whatever recreational purposes they're going to be doing around that area. Um, just in passing, um, Last Sunday, I could have done that, but with that bridge, it would have shortened my route in the water side half an hour, and I just saved my legs, away, but that's an aside, anyway. Thank you, Chair. That's actually a very good point. I would imagine the marathon runners are all wondering to themselves now where do we have to run now to make up the extra, what was the length of it again? 30 metres? I'm not sure you're actually allowed to shorten a half marathon or a marathon. Councillor Mooney, you'll just have to run around. I don't know, they'll, they'll probably say I'd up around Farm Park or somewhere like that, then back out again, you know. But anyway, well, oh, of course, and can I just, of course, congratulate both of you uh, on your sterling efforts at the weekend as well. I know that you uh, both ran the uh, Waterside Half Marathon along with um, um, Alderman Work and Councillor McKinney of uh, this parish as well, the uh, planning committee. So again, just to extend my congratulations to all um, four of you. If there were other members who ran the half marathon, I have no idea, to be truthful, um, but I applauded you all from afar. So uh, we'll uh, move on, I suppose. And of course, brilliant. Yes, of course, it's a wonderful addition. Um, to uh, the walkways and the cycle paths and all of the great work that this council has uh, put into um, matters pertaining to public health and, and, and exercise. And um, again, congratulations to all of the officer teams uh, who have been involved in, in bringing this particular project forward. I hope I'm not being premature because clearly members, I know you have to put this to the vote. I don't anticipate um, uh, any... Uh, but I'm not agreeing with these, but uh, just for the record, Maura, if you'd like to put it to the vote. Thanks, Chair. Members, this is item four, and it's a proposal to accept officer's recommendation. Alderman Alan Breslin? Four. Thanks. Alderman Keith Kerrigan? Four. Thank you. Alderman Drew Thompson? Four. Thank you. Apologies for Councillor Jason Barr. Councillor Raymond Barr? Four. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle? Four. Thank you. Councillor Angela Dobbins? Four more. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher? Four. Thank you. Councillor Christopher Jackson? Four. Thank you. Councillor Dan Kelly? Four more. Thanks. Councillor Patricia Logue, apologies. Councillor Kieran McGuire? Councillor Maguire? Can hear? Okay. Councillor Philip McKinney, apologies. And Councillor Sean Mooney. Four. Thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you, uh, members. That's unanimous. Um, uh, and just shows you the length of the day that it's been. It's actually 62 metres long and not 20 metres long. So, uh, 
it'll probably be twice around Farron Park, uh, Councillor Jackson, uh, Councillor Mooney. Okay. Uh, so, thanks for that, members. Uh, and again, thank you, officers. Uh, next scheduled item, item for us for decision is number nine. Uh, an officer presenting, no, presenting number nine, um, which is LA 11 2022 forward slash F, uh, which is the outdoor community growing inclusive of domes, etc. Uh, Malachi, take it away, please. Oh. Actually, going to be me. I know Malky's name is maybe on, but I'm doing it. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, you've done great with all this documentation, <laughs> but don't say Malky's name yes. on this. But go ahead, Casina. Um, so, item nine is um, for uh, an outdoor community growing um, uh, place. This has previously been approved. Some uh, uh, members might remember back in 2017. Um, so, I'm just show you here. Um, it's on the vacant lands at the minute as you come down um, Ebrington Road, um, just before you go into St. Columns Park. Uh, that's an uh, aerial photograph of the application site. This is a uh, current photos of the site where it has been cleared. So um, this slide just shows the two side-by-side -side approvals. Um, on the left, uh, the former design that was approved back in 2017 and um, on the right and uh, the modifications now. So just to go through the summary of changes, um, there's going to be a glass house uh, in lieu of the polytunnels with a small shed storage to the rear of the glass house. The geodesic dome will include a proposed basement and the previously approved covered walkway out from the dome to the covered outdoor kitchen, oven area and breakout space. Dining room and picnic benches will be replaced with an indoor space and outdoor seating. Uh, to the front of the site, the car park has been moved closer to the entrance and an additional five parking spaces provided and a bike shelter. Uh, the landscaping around the domes and site has been rearranged to create a more cohesive and legible space in terms of movement around the site. Um, landscape proposals also show that the existing trees are to be retained within the site and there are proposed trees. Um, uh, proposed vegetable planting and fruit bushes. Um, there's also a new entrance wall, railings and gates proposed. So um, this is a computer generated image of what the site is proposing to look like. And just a few slides showing uh, their details on the report, but um, just the details of the proposed domes that are going to be on the site. So this just gives you a kind of perspective of to the size of uh, people, what kind of size the dome will be. And um, that's just a picture there of the proposed glass houses and pot and shed that will be to the rear of the dome. So the policy context, uh, strategic plan and policy statement for Northern Ireland, the dairy area plan 2011, plan and policy statement two, plan and policy statement three, plan and policy statement six, and plan and policy statement eight. So all these policies have been fully considered in detail within the report. So in terms of the consultee responses, um, NA Water had no objection, um, Historic Environment Division, um, Historic Buildings had no objection, and Historic Monuments had no objection, subject to conditions for implementation of archaeological works. DFI Roads had no objection, Environmental Health had no objection, and there's been no representations received. So as I mentioned there, um, there's, the relevant site history was back in 2017. Um, so essentially, this is just a reconfiguration of that. Uh, just uh, noted, it's also in the report, there was some discharge of conditions that were already carried out for the 2017 approval that um, will make for ease of development of the site then now. So uh, the conclusion is a positive community-based proposal, which will substantially benefit both the surrounding area of St. Columns Park and the wider area. So having considered the proposal against uh, relevant plan and policy, object, no objections received and all material considerations, approval is recommended subject to the conditions set out in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Um, yeah, certainly a very uh, exciting project uh, and um, very positive news to see it uh, get to this particular stage um, uh, and arrive here at the... The door of the planning committee. Uh, I have uh, two indicated speakers. Uh, I start with yourself, Councillor Jackson, um, Councillor Mooney. I'll tell you what, you've worked it out between these. You want to go first? Go ahead, Councillor Jackson, go ahead. Well, thanks, Chair. And 
Um, I suppose, seeing, I, I was surprised to see this application coming from Douglas because uh, it was my understanding that we had approved it before. Um, but uh, but uh, I appreciate by reading the report and um, and and hearing the presentation, it has a reconfiguration of what has been approved before. And I know there, there's been a lot of excitement um, in respect to this application um, following the successful bid to level on up fund. So the funding is here. The, the, the funding has been secured by our team within council. They, they, they deliver this um, this exciting project, to, um, to use the word of yourself, Chair. Um, and I'm, I'm more than content to propose the application. I think the merits of the proposal and the scheme of been well rehearsed um, in, in, in 2017, and 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 following that um, during the, the application process of the level and up fund, um, and I, I suppose the fact that the, the reconfiguration of of the project doesn't change um, what was uh, what was what was originally passed is. As a, as a very much needed and and an exciting addition to the St Collins Park area. Um, so all is left for me to say is that I'm I'm more than content to propose that we accept the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Councillor Mooney. Thank you, Chair, and uh, I'm very happy to propose to second this um, proposal that the applications come forward. Obviously. Uh, being a Waterside DA member, along with Councillor Jackson, this is um, these are the type of applications and that we like to see coming to our DA. Um, it's going to benefit it's, uh, our local DA by further enhancing um, Dukes and Commons Park area, and hopefully it will be a draw for a lot more visitors to come and visit the area um, and show off our wonderful uh, park of these um, with this, this new application. Again, this is on the back of the level up. Um, Applications that were successful by our own officers. Um, obviously, we've got two other applications that were successful as well uh, for all DEAs. But I'm just very happy. This is a wonderful project and will be a, a great addition to the Waterside area. And um, very happy to second this. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jackson. Thank you, Councillor Mooney. Um, I suppose to conclude on that, you know, it's a great opportunity. Um, uh, uh, we've seen how that particular part of the city um, has become very much a, a focus over the last number of years and, you know, reflecting on uh, perhaps our uh, our history in, in, in some senses uh, and where we've come to find ourselves now um, all these years later, you know, so the development of the Peace Bridge, the further development of Vebrington, uh, the work that's going into St. Collins Park, not least of all, of course, the Foil Arena. This is a very much uh, a welcome addition uh, to all of that. Uh, and waste, uh, I do appreciate that both of you are Waterside uh, District Electoral Area representatives. Um, I'm, I'm sure you would share with me the view um, that this would this will be something that will be a significance to all of the citizens across our city and district. Um, I, I'm, I'm just imagining, actually, um, I'm going to start sounding like Mark Patterson here shortly, the Wayne's all turning up, they go and see it and stuff like that, you know, the kind of thing you hear in the radio sometimes. So thank you both of you for uh, proposing the second in it. Uh, members, that's out there. I, I don't envisage any further comment or questions. That's my... That's my pregnant pause. There aren't any. So, Maura, I think we'll take an official vote on it. Thank you, Chair. Members, this is item eight, and the recommend this is a proposal to accept officer's recommendation. Alderman Alan Breslin. For. Thanks. For. Alan, uh, Alderman Keith Kerrigan. For, for Maura. Thanks, Keith. Alderman Drew Thompson. For Maura. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Raymond Barr. For. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle. For. Thank you. Councillor Angela Dobbins. For Maura. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher. For. 
Councillor Christopher Jackson. Four. Councillor Dan Kelly. Four more. Thanks, Dan. Councillor Kieran McGuire. It's gone. Councillor Sean Mooney. Four. Thank you. Thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you, members. Um, that's unanimous. Just to confirm, that was item nine. Um, uh, that was LA 11 2022 uh, forward slash 0525 forward slash F. Um, and now the next item on our agenda and the final item uh, for consideration today is item eight. Um, that is. LA 11 2021 0479 forward slash F, uh, which is, well, it's laid out in your pack members. Um, and the officer presenting is Maliki. There is a late, a number of late items actually for your consideration. So I think I'll afford you the, all the opportunity of taking about Five, ten minutes to have a look over those, okay? That's in relation to item eight. Uh, and then we'll proceed from there.
Okay, members, uh, officers. Um, so the final uh, occasion for decision uh, today will be presented by Malagi. Uh, uh, we uh, will have one speaker, uh, and that's the applicant, uh, Daniel McAteer. Um, however, before we hear from Mr. McAteer, um, uh, Malagi, I'll uh, give you the floor if you'd like to present uh, the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, item 8 is L11-2021-0479. Uh, it's a fall planning application for the demolition of existing rear conservatory, proposed single-storey extension to rear of existing dwelling, consisting of flat roof terrace, uh, access via new external doors at first floor level, uh, the construction of detached garage at number 26 Talbot Park, and the recommendation is to refuse. Um, the site location uh, shows the extent of the site as outlined in red. Um, it, it is a, an existing detached um, property located within the residential area known as Talbot Park. There is an aerial view of the site as, as it stands. You will see the, the existing conservatory. Uh, um, that's the general location of the proposed extension and the proposed garage is located at the edge of the driveway. So just to give you a few, few, a few photographs um, to give you an idea of the context of the site. This is a view of the application site um, as looking into the driveway of number 26 Talbot Park, looking towards the, the approximate location of the new garage at this area. Um, this is a view of the conservatory, which is to be removed to accommodate the, the new extension. And this will give you an idea of the existing boundary uh, and uh, the existing extent of the garden area within 26. And again, this is a, a different angle uh, show, um, showing the conservatory. And again, the, the approximate location of the proposed extension. Um, it doesn't follow the exact same footprint of the conservatory, but it's in that general location. And again, this is a photograph taken from the, the rear of number 26, looking back towards the area to be extended. And you can probably pick out the existing conservatory uh, and the rear elevation of number 26. These images are, are taken from the neighboring property at number 28. Um, looking back towards number 28, uh, to give you an idea of the, the existing boundary between the properties. So, Again, this is another photograph taken from number 28, and you'll see the existing flat roof garage within that property. And within number 26, the cream colored house, you have the, the apex of the existing conservatory. And this is an image taken from the patio area to the rear of number 28, looking back towards the, the location of the, the first floor uh, terrace. And again, an R image taken from that area. So in terms of the, the proposed plans and some other plans to support the planning application, we have uh, received existing and proposed block plans. Um, so I suppose these are quite useful to get an idea of the proximate location of both elements of the application. The existing conservatory is clearly marked on the, the left-hand side. Um, so the proposed extension, um, is coming at an angle from the existing rear return. So as I say, it's not um, totally replacing in the exact same position of a conservatory, but it's in that general area as well as uh, um, so it's folding around the back of the property. And we also have the, the location of the proposed detached uh, garage um, along the side elevation of between 26 and 28 Talbot Park. Um, so these are the existing floor plans and existing elevations. Um, the, the main development areas are shown here. It's the, the side elevation um, as viewed from 26 and uh, the bottom one is, the, sorry, this one here would be the rear elevation that exists as viewed from the, the rear garb of 26. 
So the, the proposed floor plan um, will show the extended ground floor area here uh, and as well as the detached garage. Uh, and then again, the, at the first floor level, there's a proposed roof terrace with a, a new door opening um, from a bedroom onto that area. Uh, and elevations here, um, again, this would be a view where my cursor is now looking from 26, um, that, sorry, from 28, um, top of park. So you have the fairly, uh, the garage here, the single story garage, um, with a hip roof, somewhere in style and finish to the existing house. Uh, then we have the, the rear extension, which is flat roofed. Um, it's got paneling down along each side uh, with windows at uh, ground floor level. So there's a new feature window along the elevation. Uh, new doors uh, to access the, the first floor roof terrace area. Uh, and uh, there's a glass balustrade as well as the, the paneling that extends from the ground up to the, 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 the top level of the balustrade. So in terms of policy context, the application, the site is located within the development limits of uh, Derry uh, and therefore um, the RDS, the Derry Area Plan 2011, the SPPS and uh, Plan and Policy Statement 7, uh, residential extensions and alterations are the relevant policy context for assessing residential extensions within the development limits. Council has received an objection from the neighbouring property. Uh, the representation states that they have no objection in principle to the extension or the garage, but object to the upper level, which they believe faces and overlooks the back of their property. So uh, in terms of policy B1, uh, their area plan applies requires any new development to make a positive contribution uh, in terms of a sensitivity, in terms of character, in terms of design, scale, use of materials, you no know, officers haven't presented any issues in terms of this particular policy. Um, the SPPS sets out the, the general criteria that um, the planning authorities must take into account when assessing plan applications. Uh, suppose we draw your attention to the paragraph 2.3, um, which uh, considers the, the effect of uh, um, proposals on the amenities of all our properties. Um, and 5.72 relates to the refusal of planning permission and when permission should be uh, allowed in terms of sustainable development, uh, unless the proposal will cause demonstrable harm to the address of acknowledged importance. So having covered those policies, the main policy consideration for officers uh, in respect of this application and assessing and, and arriving at our recommendation is uh, policy EXT1 of PPS7 addendum, which um, it, it's, the, it's the only policy within, uh, sorry, that's the relevant policy within that application. Um, policy, the, so EXT1 has four criteria. It says that plan permission will be granted for a proposal to extend or alter a uh, property where all of the following criteria are met. Um, we've set out in our case officer report a consideration of each of the four uh, criteria. Um, as the bottom of the policy says, also we've also taken the account, the guidance uh, when assessing uh, against the above criteria. So um, criteria A, C and D have been considered in, the, in respect of the proposal, both the garage and the extension. And this officer's opinion is that the, the the, the, the proposal um, has no, there's no issues with the proposal in respect of those three elements of EXT1. However, we do have concerns with, with regards to um, criteria B, which is the criteria which relates to the proposal does not unduly affect the privacy or amenity of neighbouring residents. Um, we have taken into account um, the guidance. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's concentrating on the policy directs in terms of unduly affecting the privacy. We've looked at the, the nature of the application, which is a, a roof terrace. Um, and we note that uh, within the section dealing with privacy, that um, it, it states that roof terraces have the potential to cause overlooking problems. 
And we also note that uh, as well that um, the overlooking of gardens uh, may be unacceptable will result in intrusive direct or uninterrupted views. Uh, and we've covered in our report that although A30 says it's from a main room, that we consider the, the issue, um, sorry, the, the effect from a roof terrace would be similar in the main, uh, as to a main room in terms of the usage. So our main concern with the proposal is relation to policy EXT1, um, as I say, it's the criteria B. It was considered by officers that this policy test is the key consideration in assessing the application. As assessment of officers that the roof terrace will overlook the private, I mean, in the space of the neighbouring number 28 Talbot Park. Um, we believe this is due to the position, height and orientation of the roof terrace and the absence of any adequate or existing or proposed mitigation measures. Having established in our consideration the proposal will affect the property by reason of overlooking, officers further consider whether this overlooking would unduly affect the privacy or immunity of the neighbouring residents. Number 28, uh, Talbot Park has a patio area near to the property, which is the area considered by officers to be overlooked. Uh, and was indicated uh, as indicated in the earlier photographs. It's the area closest to the, the number twenty eight. So our main concern relates to a lack of mitigating measures to avoid uninterrupted, uninterrupted views into this most private area of the garden of number twenty eight. Um, officers did propose building a large screen along the perimeter of the roof terrace to remove uh, the possibility of overlooking. And we're advised that the, the applicant did not want to amend the application to add such a screen wall or a mitigation measure. It is our opinion that there's no other form of mitigation that is reasonable or and enforceable through plan and condition. For example, plan and condition cannot control or manage the degree or extent of usage of the roof terrace by the applicant. Therefore, it was concluded by officers that the roof terrace will overlook the patio area of number 28 and as a result would unduly affect the privacy and amenity enjoyed by the occupants at this location of their property. Uh, in respect of the, the objection, um, the third party stated they have no issues in, in principle with the extension or the garage, but objected in particular to the upper floor balcony or as we refer to the roof terrace which they believe faces and overlooks the back of their property. They felt that it was over obtrusive on their privacy and not in keeping with the street as they believe residents are discreet and private. Um, we also, um, it's important to note that we received um, a, a rebuttal uh, entitled a privacy, a privacy statement to the, the objection, which was submitted by the applicant. And we re-notified the, the objector uh, of this this uh, sought to address their concerns with raising the objections. Um, when we re-notified the objectors, um, they reiterated that they had uh, no concerns with the substantive part of the plans, but they did feel the balcony would overlook directly in their garden, and they were unconvinced by the points made by the architects in their privacy statement. So, uh, and, and in conclusion, and, and consideration of the policy, uh, the material, all material considerations, uh, including the, the third party representations, it is officers' opinion that the proposal is contrary to policy EXT1 of uh, the addendum to PPS7, and that the development would have permitted harm to the immunity of the adjoining residents by reason of overlooking a loss of privacy. And our recommendation to members is to refuse the proposal before you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Maliki, um, uh, for outlining the report for us. As indicated, members, um, <clears throat> we do have one speaker, um, uh, Mr. Daniel McIntyre, who is the applicant uh, for this proposal in front of you today. Uh, Daniel, thanks for your patience, and um, I know it's been a long wait, but um, we're finally here. Uh, so just to welcome you on behalf of uh, all of the committee this afternoon. Uh, normal um, procedures will apply. I note uh, that you presented um, some documentation which contains uh, photographs, and I'm guessing you'll want to refer to those uh, as you speak. Uh, you're welcome to do so, uh, but the time limit will be the time limit. Um, obviously, it's within my uh, control to perhaps 
uh, give you a little bit of leeway, but um, uh, we'll see how we get on uh, initially. So again, Daniel, um, I uh, welcome you now to um, uh, give your presentation to the committee. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair, and thanks for putting me at the end of the line there to accommodate my uh, diary constraints. I appreciate that. Uh, secondly, can I thank also the clerk for providing the information, including the late items. Uh, and thirdly, there was an issue which I don't really need to uh, deal with now because I think it's been dealt with by the absence of someone. So dealing with our housekeeping, having dealt with housekeeping, I'll put the stopwatch on and I'll try and get straight to the point. I say that the members of the planning committee uh, should be cognizant of two things. Uh, this application should never have found its way to the planning committee. Uh, and I believe there are reasons why it has done. But secondly, uh, now that it has got this length, uh, that the committee should and has the power to uh, approve the scheme, in other words, reject the uh, suggestion by the officers. Uh, the first point to make is that we, as owners and full time occupants of 26 Talbot Park, are also entitled to amenity. Uh, as much as our neighbours are, our non-resident neighbours are. Uh, and I would ask you to look at the previous planning history where the neighbours have since they bought the house, although they hadn't moved in, they built a property about 30 feet nearer to our property. They added an extension to the left-hand side, which in the interest of being good neighbourly, we didn't object to. Uh, secondly, uh, because of their absence, they didn't realise that we actually have or had a flat roof garage uh, next to the hedge. So if we want to put that back in, and if me and my wife want to sit out there in the rain 365 days a year looking straight in the garden, we can do. So therefore, our plan actually improves their immunity. I also wouldn't refer members to the planning history at number 30. Where there's a big new extension and there's a great big window looking straight into the garden, uh, which was approved by this council. So that's the first thing which I say you're entitled to give weight to as decision makers. Secondly, they are no worse off. Uh, and as I've said, they are in fact better off as a result of this. The third thing I think you are entitled to give uh, weight to are the four policy considerations. Uh, and just to use an all expression, on those I think we are violently in agreement. There are four issues. Uh, Maliki has already dealt with it. Issue one, the officers are completely content. Issue two, the officers are completely content. And issue three, the officers are completely content. And I say, therefore, that you can now give weight to the first two big reasons, the amenity points and the, 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 the rights of the property owners. But you can also give weight to the three points that are in our favour. So even if you were to take Maliki's argument at its height, it wouldn't be have sufficient weight to justify in law or in regulation uh, a refusal. And I would urge uh, members of the planning committee to apply the rule of law and the principles of planning policy rather than engage in any personality uh, that may or personality issues that may arise out of this. Taking the, the, the one and only point that the planning officers have raised, uh, they rely on section A28 and A30. What I say at the outset is that they are plainly wrong in their analysis. Section A28 does refer to uh, terraces or roof terraces, right? Section A30 doesn't. It refers to main rooms. Now, there are legal uh, and regulatory definitions of main rooms, or more particularly, habitable rooms. Uh, the flat roof on top of a kitchen in the middle of Derry in the northwest of Ireland is not a main room. So what the planning officers have done wrongly, in my opinion, is that they've imported the content of A30 into the requirements of A28, and I will return to that. So therefore, I reject the conclusion by Malky that we uh, breach that point at all. So therefore, I say not only do we have a 98% victory as matters presently stand, we have a 100% victory. And that leads me to the next point, which is a procedural point. This application within, it's a relatively modest extension to a kitchen. We're trying to take away a conservatory because we cannot get access to the upper gutters. That's all we're doing here. We've been living here now for 26 years. We're trying to improve the property and make it more modern, deposit the next generation. 18 months later, we're here in front of the planning committee. Now, it is my view and my belief, and, and I've recently suggested, that this isn't really looking for justifiable reasons. This is digging to find an excuse to say no, to bring this in front of the planning committee. That's my position. Now, the reason I say that is this. There was correspondence from our architect with uh, a number of people, including the planning officers, in October 21. A second site visit was arranged. 
And following that site visit, we received a letter to say that the planning officers were content and that our neighbour was content. Subsequent to that, it was into a group meeting and some senior planning officer, whose name doesn't really matter, decided to find this. And by interpreting, by misinterpreting A20 A30, they, they say that there's a reason to refuse. So what I would say is this. First of all, the weight of the reasons to say yes far outweigh any any reason to say no, and that that reason to say no um, is uh, not legal in any event. So the definitely, the, I would like, if I may, just to refer to the, the policies. If I could ask them to be shown on the screen, policy A28 and A30. If I may, Mr. Chairman, have that um, presented. Excuse me, Chair, just to advise that Mr. McAteer's five minutes speaking rights now is complete. Thank you, uh, Mr. McAteer. I'll give you two more minutes. Well, if you don't mind just starting the clock when the screen gets up. And so, um, Mr. McAteer, just to advise, two more minutes. Just to advise, I'm going to give you one last chance here. Two minutes starts when the screen is up, okay? Now, if you don't want to do that that way, I'm a busy Mr. man. Mr. McAteer, right, this, this committee operates to a particular protocol, uh, I am, I am, I, I am given the responsibility to see that all applicants are, are given fair and equal um, uh, treatment, um, uh, and so therefore I can only grant you two more minutes. I don't have to grant you two more minutes. So, can we start the two minutes now, please? I don't have time for this type of argument. So, if we just get on with it, thank you very much. I'm aware of the protocol is that you ought to, uh, ought to abide to. So, when the thing is up, we'll begin speaking. When you read A28, it says, except in most isolated rural locations, few households can claim to be overlooked to some degree. The protection of privacy of the occupants of residential properties, occupant being the, strong, the strident word, occupant being habitable or rooms in occupation, flat roof terraces and dairy, we're not in the south of Spain, are not in occupation. And in that section A28, they do refer to balconies, et cetera, et cetera, roof terraces. However, A30 is specific. It says as follows, overlooking of gardens may be unacceptable where it would result in, and I quote, intrusive, direct, and uninterrupted view from a main room. On any analysis, a roof terrace on the top of a kitchen is not a main room. And if I can now turn to some of the photographs, provided you don't close me out on it, I would like uh, the members to have an opportunity to look at some of the photographs that I've submitted. Uh, and those photographs will show that the view from number 30 and that window, which is from a room, is directly into the neighbour's garden. And the, the view from the flat roof garage is closer to the neighbour's garden. And the view from our terrace will not be anywhere near the, the, the uh, it does not infringe the privacy at all in line with the regulations, even though it's not a, a main room to start with. Now, on top of that, I do point out that before, when this was lifted for hearing, and because of my court commitments, I asked you to adjourn this because conversations had broken out with the neighbour. The neighbour has now said, I'm interested to see it, you haven't been told this, the neighbour has said that if we don't put a door there, we put a window there, then this will be okay. That exposes the folly of this, because I can climb out the back window of my house and set up permanent residence in the roof terrace. So what I say is that the weight is for this application, it should be approved, but I also want to reserve my position about the manner in which this application was rejected. I'll leave it at that for questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. McAteer. Um, just, just for clarity, did you request that we might defer a decision on this? Because it sounded to me like you said that, and then you said something that might have run contrary to that. If you could just clear that up for me before we, we, we move on. I did, as you know, there there has been past and there will be future litigation between uh, a project that I'm involved in and this council, and therefore I did not want my family home in the subject of a public airing and dirty washing. So what I'd said to the planners was, listen, uh, I can talk to the neighbour and find out what his issues are and see could we resolve them. Give us a bit of time to do that. And please let me know uh, if my request for an adjournment will be granted. They said they would write back. They didn't write back and just listed for the 7th of September having been told that I was in court that day. So that's the first point. So yes, Mr. Boyle, I did indicate that I was quite happy to have it adjourned, but but in the meantime, the position of adjournment would be as follows. A determination of the proper legal interpretation 
of policy uh, of the A28 and A30. Because even if the planning officers are right, I say the weight is in favour of us that you must say yes. But this is an important point that may, I, I want to demonstrate, I say, that this was misapplied. And I believe there was a reason why it was misapplied. But I think it might benefit this council if clarity is sought in that. Because I'm saying one thing, the council officers are saying another, and we've been here before. I don't expect the planning committee members to take my word for it. So if you have to adjourn it, then the adjournment should be to clarify who's right on the interpretation of A28 and A30. You may already have your own view on that. Um, but, but yes, you're right. I did, I did try to do that. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, thanks for that. That brings some degree of clarity to it, uh, Mr. McAteer. However, um, the uh, application is right in front of the planning committee now. Um, uh, whatever conversations were had between yourself and officers and all of that, that that's that's for another day. Uh, but it's a live application, as I consider it, uh, in front of the committee here today. And so this committee um, uh, are given the responsibility uh, to adjudicate on this today um, and, and arrive at a decision today. Um, so on that basis, uh, and I thank you for joining us, but on that basis, I'm now going to open it up to members of this committee uh, to uh, ask any questions that uh, they feel may well be pertinent um, uh, to you uh, as the applicant. So, members, I'm going to open it up to the floor. Chair Angela here. Sorry, I'm unable to get um, for the Councillor Dobbins, Dobbins, apologies. Um, are you are you looking to ask a question of Mr. McAteer? Yes, I am, Chair. And okay, I sorry, Councillor Dobbins. I didn't see I didn't see it in the chat box, and if I could just have people in the chat box, go ahead, Angela. Yeah, thanks, Chair. And as I had said, I was unable to. The button won't work for the chat line, so. Which is why I've caught on. That's perfect. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead, Councillor Dobbins. Um, Mr. McAteer, can I ask a question? Look, with regard in reading uh, all the the letters and and uh, the the objectors' point of view and everything else, can I ask, like, um, what is what is the vital importance of this um, ter uh, terrace? Um, why? You know that there wouldn't be um like even with our planning officers you know there it's not the, ex the extension that seems to be the problem it is this um rift terrace and was the same with uh overlooking and uh with your neighbor so can i ask why what's the vitality behind um this uh roof terrace oh. Just to deal with it, if I could refer you to some of the photographs, I'll, I'll explain exactly what the issue is. And the answer to your question in one word or two words, there isn't really any issue. But if I could refer you to the document that I submitted uh, and the photograph at page one of the bundle, I'm not sure if you have that, Councillor Dobbins. At page one there. Uh, if, if I'd ask that they might be put up anyway on the screen for ease of reference. Uh, perhaps it could be done. That could be done now. If, if the photographs could be put up, the the uh, index of documents that I put in with my speaking book, could they be uplifted to the screen, please? I, I'll explain. Um, <clears throat> well, I I I I I I'm happy enough, Mr. McAteer, here to try and facilitate that, but uh, I'm not sure that the documentation that we have is the, the numbering system that we're operating with is the same numbering system that you're operating with. So, trying to make life easy for everybody, um, can you maybe point us in the very precise uh, picture that you're talking about? Well, several pictures. First of all. But um, I understand there is an issue with the pagination, but there is a contents page, first of all. So if we refer to the contents page, the numbering will then follow. The numbering's at the bottom left-hand side of all the photographs, and that might make that might make navigation much easier. And I'm mindful how late in the evening it is, so I, I will try and get on with it. But, but to come back to Councillor Dobbins' uh, situation, uh, when, I, when we see the photographs, you will see that at the moment we have this conservatory, and we can't get up to the roof 
to a uh, service of gutters, do painting and stuff like that, other than half killing ourselves. And you see an old bucket on top of the roof. When the floods came the last time, I had to put the bucket up there to stop all the water pouring into the main building. You'll see the damage that's been done to the building. We have no interest in the terrace. We don't sunbathe nor we give the opportunity. We don't care. It's a feature. It's no more than that. Uh, I'd said to the neighbour, I have no difficulty in due course changing the door to the window. And he says, that's fine. His issue is in privacy. His issue is a door, which exposes the complete folly of this. So, But the reason why we want it is it's a feature to make the house look modern. And secondly, we need access to our property to stop it. That, sorry, there it is now. Concert happens. You see that pitch roof there? You can't climb up on top of that for fear of going through the glass. And if you look at the next picture, I think that might be picture 24. If you look at the next one, you'll see the damage now to our property. All the water is gathering in that, that corner. So for us to get up and paint that, or for us to get up and deal with scoring, we need a flat roof. We have no intention of using the terrace. The terrace is only a feature, and that was made clear. But having said that, the mitigation measures that were already accepted by the neighbour previously, and I think he was told to change his mind, that's a different point, were already there. So we don't infringe any rules anyway. But the answer to your question is to stop that sort of flooding to our home. And if I could just refer to, um, if I could just refer to, uh, page 19, page 19, you will see there, Councillor Dobbins, where there's a flat roof garage in our next door neighbour's house. You see, the, just, you can see the roof of it. We have a, we had a similar flat roof garage right beside that hedge. So if we wanted to climb up on that roof, we'll be looking right into the garden. So it's only to provide access to the upper bits. That's really what we're, what we're looking to do. And if I could just ask to refer to uh, page one of the of the of the of the photographs just to demonstrate the point finally. Page page one. Page one shows. No, sorry, it's on the, yeah, on the next one. It should be. Sorry, it's page four. My mistake. It's the bottom right hand side. Page four. So page four. Now what what you've just passed through there. Is the previous footprint of our building showing our wee flat roof guides? And you'll see the flat roof guides there. That's number 28. And you'll see how far that is from our house. And there was a wee flat roof guides at the other side. If you go to page five, this council approved a planning application for that within eight weeks. And they've built on practically another house closer to our hedge. Now, we didn't object and that was the neighbor in this, but you'll see the work still isn't finished. Uh, and that's a different point. So hopefully that answers as best I can. But it's to get up the flat. We're, we're not interested. We'll never be out in the flat roof other than for maintenance reasons. And as I say, it's only done for a feature. But the architect made sure that they were compliant with the regulations before they put the feature in. I mean, I'd have no difficulty changing this if, if that's required. But but before I do so, I would I would like the point clarified that we did properly apply the policy and regulation for obvious reasons, Councillor. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. McIntyre. Um, members, anybody else got any questions for Mr. McIntyre? John, if you would let me in again. Go ahead, Angela. Thank you, John. Um, uh, Mr. McIntyre, then if it's, I, I realize what I do 100% understand what you're saying is for maintenance only. Um, so, therefore, why not put a screen up? Why why not have some sort of buff you no know, a buffering like a, a screen doesn't have to be um solid screen, you know, it could be uh green greenery, you know, why not put a screen up then? No, I think that's a, a fair question, but the, the, the choreography of this was mispresented by Mr. McCarran there because what he forgot to tell you or forgot to mention you was that we had already set out mitigation measures which the neighbor accepted. This idea of a six foot obscure screen is not only absurd, but it doesn't work. First of all, it doesn't actually add the privacy because you can stand up and look over it if you want it. Secondly, it's extremely expensive and it's an eyesore. So the whole point of this is a feature. Now the objector has already written back to me. And I'm surprised that you don't, or you haven't been given the letter. The objector has written back to say, if we put a window there instead of doors, he's more than content. So uh, we say, that the obscure screen has been a fabrication of a planning officer. No one has ever mentioned an obscure screen. But look, 
this is really again a procedural issue. Uh, what what the, what the objector has said, and if, if this is noted, that if we put the window in, he's got no difficulties. I think he wants the assurances that if it's a window, then we'll climb in and out of it to do maintenance, which is fair enough. Um, but, but that's the point. So it's not that we don't want the we're being awkward about putting in a, a screen. What we say is that this screen has been brought in as an excuse to justify this refusal. Uh, and I would also refer you to page, the, the, the picture at page 29, where you will see the new extension at number 30. If we just go to that, where you will see that there is a room built on there with full views through the full extent of the neighbor's garden and everyone's happy. So, um, so, so that that's it. I'm not being awkward here, but not put up an obscure. The, the thing just completely, uh, I, we say, and our architect says, is outside the keeping of the house. If you just go to it's page twenty nine, it's top page twenty nine. It's on down just. So there it is. There, that's number thirty. That's the house below twenty eight. You see the window there. That is the main room. Or that is a room, looking directly over the garden. That was approved by this committee. Or sorry, by this council. But you know, if, if the neighbour wants the window and you want to adjourn this, we'll go and put the window in and submit the revised plan. But uh, I reserve my position in clarifying this point. So we'll do that. So there therefore is no valid objection before the uh, council. The neighbour is satisfied. I think he has written. I think Maliki should confirm because the officers should confirm it. The neighbour has written. He wrote to me to say he'd be writing to the officers to say he was content if we put in the window instead of the door. And maybe that would alleviate allay your concerns, Councillor Adams. Okay, thank you, Mr. McAteer. Um, any other members got any questions? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Gallagher? Yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, maybe it's, it's more clarification in the sense of, of the applicant saying that they could change the window, uh, door to a window. Is, is it possible that we, that we could look at that as a condition? And go ahead with this application today. Just looking clarification on that. Uh, okay, thanks, uh, Councillor Gallagher. Um, right, I think it's probably best if I afford the the head of planning the opportunity to answer that particular question. Um, uh, I I would have a view on it, but of course I'm not the professional planner. I'm I'm here to adjudicate on these things. So, Maura, if you would answer that in relation to the idea that we could pass this and then have another another kick at the kick at us, that, 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 I don't imagine that's possible, is it? Sorry, Chair. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying this. If, if we were minded to to grant this, and are we able to put a condition, i.e., that a door changes to a window. That's that's okay. Councillor Geller, I understand where you're coming from now. Yeah, um, Maura. Just yeah. to avoid the sorry. sorry, sorry, um, uh, Mr. McAteer, I've, I've asked uh, for an opinion from an officer here. Go ahead, Maura. Yeah, the short answer is no, but I'll pass you over to Suzanne for the details previously discussed. Thanks. Well. Okay, so Councillor Gallagher, no, we couldn't put a condition on this approval. Uh, Conditioning the change to the from the door to the window that would require amended plans. Those plans would have to be renewed and notified as is required um, in our legislation. Um, so we would require amended plans, and the description would require to be amended as well if that was if that was what was being proposed. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, so. Through the chair, I think I'll respond to Councillor Gallagher's question this way. We will be happy for a deferral. We will make the change, submit it, do the notification, and add an hour, three months delay. Just for the record, I'm saying that uh, without prejudice to the fact that we don't have any obligation to do so, but we will be, we will be prepared to do that, okay? And thank you, Councillor Gallagher, for the uh, practical and perhaps pragmatic suggestion. I disagree with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Look, the thing is that this application, as it stands, is the application that this committee have to consider. There is no other application in front of this committee for them to consider. 
Uh, and uh, you know, right at, at this, well, at this point, at this point, right all this committee have in front of them is the report that's in front of them, um, I, uh, and so therefore, it, it's, it's very difficult for me to be able to move our way through this until I get some degree of direction from other people. Chair Angela here. I'm on the chat. I don't know whether you're seeing it or not. Members, I've I've had a request from the city solicitor. Uh, I'm going to afford officers a few minutes here to um to discuss um some of the elements of of um, of, of how you all discussed this so far. Okay.
Hallo. Angela, that's the beauty of, of being not in the room. <laughs> I thought it was offline there. <laughs> okay, members, I did ask you for uh, some uh, time for officers to um, consider. Um, and having done so, um, Mr. McAteer, you were suggesting, um, as I understand it, uh, that you um, wish to submit an amended plan which would remove the door and replace it with a window. Um, uh, and the only way for that to be done would be for the submission um, of an amended description uh, and the plan to the, to the Council Planning Department. Um, uh, otherwise, this committee um, have nowhere to go with this. Um, and so, members, again, it's open to yourselves. Um, I, I see a number of people are um, perhaps suggesting that we would defer a decision on this. But if we're going to defer a decision on this, members, we need to be understanding that we're deferring it to afford the applicant an opportunity to submit amended plans um, and amended description as well. If we're defer that's the only reason we could defer it. Well, one hundred percent, Chair, and I think that's what I had said um, earlier on the chat line. Um, could we ask for a deferral for an amicable solution? And if the solution is to put a window in instead of doors with new plans to be submitted, then I'm happy to propose that. Right, uh, Councillor Dobbins. Uh, you'll understand that um, uh, you may well have typed that in the chat box, but the chat box is not public, um, and so therefore uh, uh, it would be required um, that we um, verbally state uh, the reason that we are going to defer this, uh, and the reason, as suggested by me, the chair, um, is to, if we're going to defer it, is to afford um, the applicant uh, an opportunity to submit amended plans, um, which I think he suggested would mean that he was going to remove the door or replace the window. Um, and of course, that would also require an amended description. And I want members to understand that that's what you're deferring it for. There can be no other reason. 100%. Sorry, Councillor Jackson, could you knock your mic on? Chair, I'm just, I think, just for clarity, are we still in questions to the applicant? Um, because I, I wasn't sure we could take a proposal of that nature whilst we were in this section of the of the application. And, and there may be, well, if, I mean, if, there if, may if be questions are... to the officer that, 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 um, that could be put forward prior to that proposal. I, I, do you know what? Commissioner Jackson, I'm all for asking the applicant more questions. If members feel that they want to ask the applicant more questions, I, I didn't see anybody um, prior to me saying what I've just said, say that they wanted to ask the applicant more questions. So I am now going to put it to the floor. Members, have you any further questions that you would like to ask the applicant? And by virtue of that silence, I, I, that's that's where I was going with this. Um, and so, um, having heard Mr. Baggett here um, suggest uh, that he um, would wish to resubmit an amend uh, and re-describe, then if that's what Mr. McAteer wants, as chair of the committee, I'll put that to you. But before I do that, Mr. McAteer, is that what you would like us to do? Well, I think I think there are two routes. I mean, one, you could vote to approve the scheme and save us the 18 months that we've been waiting for this application. But I'm prepared to accept that. It's not what I want. I don't want to make changes, but I will. Uh, but I reserve my position as to whether we should have. But I will do that uh, in, in the spirit of what Councillor Dobbins talks about. But I think what Councillor Jackson was suggesting may have been questions for the officers. Uh, and in the meantime, I would like clarity 
about the legality of the interpretation of A28 and A30, but we'll deal with that. We don't need to deal with that here. I'll deal with that separately. So, but I'm in your hands, and whatever you want me to do. Um, so what, sorry, yeah. what Angela Dobbins, what Councillor Dobbins has suggested. I will do in the spirit of amicability without surrendering our rights about this 18 month process that we've been dragged through mischievously, we say. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, now, you see, the thing about it is, it's up to this committee as one, as a committee, um, whether they feel that that is what they as a committee would wish to do. Um, I'm putting that forward now at this point. If the committee want to continue on and ask questions of the officers, of course you can do so. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll put it out to you, but basically there were already members suggesting that we would defer this. Um, and if we are getting into the point of deferral, then that would mean that we don't ask officers questions. Members, it's over to yourself, Councillor Jackson. Um, thanks, Chair, and I suppose just before um, I, or we take a decision on whether or not to defer it. I, I would have a question to the officer, um, and I suppose it's it's a hypothetical question. But um, for instance, if if there was um, if there was a move to replace a window leading on to a rooftop terrace with a door, would that be dealt with under? Um, would that would that be um, under permitted development, um, would, would that would that be dealt with under permitted development, or would that require a new application? I think what you're asking is whether or not this is a revised submission to the current application. Or are you asking that this won't be withdrawn and a new application be submitted or a new proposal? Because it would be a new proposal. I mean, the current application. What members are asking now is that that a revised submission on the current application be submitted in order to address the issues. No, I, I suppose just just for complete clarity, because I know I know there's been we read the, the correspondence from the one the objector and um we, and we we have heard the the views of the applicant. Um, but I'm mindful that whatever is decided by this committee um, it will be there beyond the tenure of the applicant and and the objector. So there there has to be protections for the the amenity of future residents of the neighbouring property. And uh, and I suppose we don't know the views of of future tenants of the applicant's property. Um, so what I'm what I'm suggesting is or what I'm asking is if there was a window leading to a rooftop terrace, um, if somebody in the future made changes, they replace that window with a door, could that be done under permitted development or would it require a new application? Well, you're you're asking a hypothetical. We don't have proposals. I would imagine what you mean is that there's obviously still going to be a change to the conservatory and a, a different ground floor, which needs permission. So I would imagine that it would all need permission. But at a later date, changing from windows to doors on a roof terrace, do you know, it's still a roof terrace. If it's not a, we don't know what the proposal is going to be. If the whole development, you know, that's going to change. So we, we, we can't give an opinion until we see the drawings and what exactly um, Mr. McAteer is proposing. And, you know, we, we can't predict then what might or may or not be PD in the future until I know, because clearly there's more to this proposal than simply a door and a window. And, and also the description is for a, their creation of a roof terrace. You know, so if the proposal is no longer um you know uh the nature that it is so it's it's a different proposal thanks chair, chair chair very briefly and i suppose that's the point that i was getting at is that the the fact that replacing a door with a window doesn't um it, it, it doesn't address the issue around protection of residential amenity and that's that, that's the point that i'm getting at so i'm not entirely convinced that a deferral and a new application will resolve um, the, 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 the policy issues. Thank you.
However, it's out there, as some members suggested at the feral. Councillor Raymond Barr, uh, you indicated some time ago. Um, uh, are you still uh, wishing to speak? Yes, Chair, thank you. Yeah, Raymond. The definition of a, of a flat roof terrace being considered or compared to a main room, I so many interpretations, it's something that I can't get my head around. Well, I, I think we need more specific advice on that. And, and to that end, I, I want to make a, a proposal. I, I would uh, propose we, we defer this until we get legal advice on the inter, inter, interpretation of the law which determines this policy. For example, uh, Section 828 and Section 830. Thank you, Councillor Bart. Um, Councillor Barr, just for clarity, you when you refer to legal advice, are you referring to seeking external legal advice out with this council? Well, if the city solicitor can supply any advice, no, I would be happy to hear it. But if not, I, I, I would be referring to external legal advice. Okay, um, uh, first up, our, we're just going to have to park that one for a second because we actually do have two proposals on the floor. We have to take a first one first, which I knew. Uh, and in my, um, in my way, I'm trying to sort our way through uh, a situation uh, that we find ourselves in. As I said, there were a number of people who suggested a deferral. I suggested a wording for that deferral. Um, and so I, I proposed a deferral with the wording that I suggested earlier, uh, if somebody was w willing to um, uh, second that and put I'll it I'll second that, Chair. I'm Thank you, Councillor Dobbins. Okay. So, um, again, Understanding that Mr. McAteer suggested that he will submit an amended plan which will remove the door, uh, replace the window with the door, um, uh, and there will be uh, an amended description, etc., for further consideration by the Council Planning Committee. That's what you're voting on. Sorry, Chair. It's replace the door with the window. Sorry, you, you just turned it backwards there. <sighs> to remove the door and replace it with a window. Okay. I think I've said that about four times anyway, Councillor Dobbins. Um, so uh, that's what you're voting for, but thank you, uh, Councillor Dobbins. So um, do you know what? We've got a proposal, we've got a seconder, put it to the floor. Maura, can you take a vote? Thanks, Chair. Members, this is item eight. Um, the proposal is to submit an amended plan and description. Um, for this proposal, this application. Alderman Alan Breslin. Go home. Yeah, he's left. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Uh, against, Mara. Thank you. Alderman Dre Thompson. Against, Mara. Uh, Councillor Jason Barr has his apologies. Councillor Raymond Barr. Barr. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle. For. Councillor Angela Dobbins. For Maura. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher. For. Thank you. Councillor Christopher Jackson. Against. Thank you. Councillor Dan Kelly. Against Maura. Thank you. Um, Councillor Patricia Logue has apologies. Councillor Kieran Maguire. Thank you. 
And Councillor Sean Mooney. Or. Thank you. I four and five against. Chair. Sure. Members, that um, results in a, uh, a tied vote, five four, five against. Um, uh, clearly, as chair of the committee, I have a cast and vote, uh, and I won't be changing my vote, so I am uh, therefore for um, uh, uh, the uh, proposed um, deferral on the basis uh, as suggested. Um, now, I'm going to come back to Councillor Raymond Barr. Raymond, back to yourself. Are you still looking for that legal advice, that external legal advice that you said you might want? Well, if it can't be supplied internally, I, I, I would like it. Uh, I would like that advice. Should it be from an external source? Because if only for future reference, because there, there seems to be a lot of ambiguity around that particular issue. Thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to that proposal, obviously, we have a deferral now for amended plans uh, to be considered. Uh, once the amended plans are received, the A28, A30 point may, may become moot uh, so far as this particular application is concerned. Um, certainly, members, we can look at that in relation to any future application of a similar nature should it come forward for the con uh, concerns of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Okay. Um, can I say, are you content with that? Yeah, happy enough for that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bar. Okay. Um, well, Mr. Mackett, here, as a result of the deliberations this afternoon, um, I, I think it's evident now that we uh, we won't be proceeding and we look forward to uh, a future um, uh, um, amended plan, etc. Uh, coming to the planning department um, uh, and uh, wish you well with it. Thank you again for your patience in, in relation to the length of uh, our deliberations over the last couple of days. Um, uh, and uh, again, I'm going to move us on now to the next item on our agenda because we do have some uh, other papers to consider. So thank you very much, Mr. McAteer. Thanks, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, members, um, two reports for decision, uh, nine and 10, uh, DFI Riverine LA 11. Well, I think it's, it's more to Andre. If you could vote. Sorry, Councillor Gallagher, go ahead. Thank you, Chair Flynn. Chair, can I just declare a, a, a non procuring interest? That's on, on the, on the Riverine? On, on both nine, of them. Nine and 10. Okay, I um, I think we can we can love with that. Councillor Gallagher, I'm sure there's plenty of councillors involved in that one. Okay, so number nine, um Andre. Um yes, thank you through the chair. Um item nine is um a receipt of a consultation um the council received from DFI. And it's a transboundary consultation in relation to the riverine project at um, Lefford. There's also um, a current application with planning officers for <clears throat> sorry, the Straban side of the riverine project. So this is in relation to further environmental information that has been received. Um, the application is being decided by Ambor Planella, being assessed and deci decided by Ambor Planella. Um, so it's really just if members wish to make any um, comment, um, we will submit a consultation response back to DFI, which will be passed on to the through the application. And I just for reference there, I just put on um, as part of the appendix a previous consultation response that was sent from council. So the first consultation was on an initial consultation, a transboundary consultation, and this is a second consultation for because of further environmental information that has been received during the processing of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. 
Members, uh, does anybody have any comment to make on that? Uh, yourself, Councillor Kelly, go ahead, Dan. Thanks, Chair, and, and like uh, Councillor Gallagher had proposed, or had me um, declaring an interest as well, non pecuniary. Um, in, in relation to the, the papers that, that Andre's just delivered, I, am, I would propose we would make a response and, and content with the, the, the template that's there uh, from, from earlier in the year. Although I would ask maybe consideration be given at the last line of the letter um, would change maybe from um, and acknowledge um, so that we're just not acknowledging, but actually recommending to board, on board Planola uh, the proposal that's in front of them. If, if that's acceptable um, in terms of, you know, our our role as a planning committee and given the fact that we also will be assessing uh, one of these applications in due course, but um, I would make that a proposal chair that we would respond positively. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Councillor Kelly, I would concur with you. So, um... I second you. I think you're suggesting perhaps it's actually not strong enough. Um, uh, and what you're suggesting perhaps adds some degree of weight uh, uh, to it. Uh, so, um, are, are members content with that slight change? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, further to that, then, moving on, agenda item 10 again, Andre. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, agenda item 10, sorry, should I explain this at the start of item 9? So we have two consultations here um, and there are two applications. Um, one application is to deal with the Riverine Park and the other application is to deal with the bridge element. So really the consultations relate to the same project, but they are being dealt with under two separate application numbers. So a similar response if members are content. Um, on the, the two applications. Yep, I think it um, uh, goes without saying uh, a similar response. Uh, is everybody content with that in relation to this one? Don't see anybody saying anything different. Thank you very much. Uh, members, the uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 are open for your information. Anybody wants to make comment, please. And the kid. Okay. Uh, can I have a proposer and a seconder to go into confidential for decision? So Councillor Jackson and seconded Councillor Mooney. We'll just wait for a second until IT have 